Hello everyone, welcome to my channel on Shift Stability again. Today we are going to discuss about Shift Stability during dry docking. And uh, of course the grounding theory is also same. So to start with, we all know that when a ship is floating, the displacement or weight is fully supported by the buoyancy force. But when the ship enters the dry dock, and usually the ships are having a small stern trim when they enter dry dock, so it is the stern part that is the blocks first as the water level starts dropping. So as soon as this turn, that is the keel block, a force, a thrust force P starts acting on the keel plate of the ship. And this up thrust force P will stay, will, uh, will act and increase throughout the time the ship is, uh, uh, the water level is dropping and the ship is finally on the keel blocks and the dock is dry. Critical period, it is this interval from the time the ship's turn takes the block till the time she is, the forward takes the blocks, means that completely she, the ship is on the keel blocks. So from the time the stern takes the blocks till the time the bow takes the blocks and the ship is resting on the blocks along its entire length. This period is called critical period and why is critical? Because during this period this upthrust force P is causing a loss in the ship's GM and the ship is only supported at one end on the keel block like a pivot there and the forward length of the complete ship is still floating. So if during this period GM loss takes place uh, uh, and the uh, more than required and ship becomes unstable and she can slip off the blocks and capsize. So because there is no support, she is only supported at the aft end. But once the ship is fully on the blocks, this uh, concern becomes very less then. And what's the critical instant? It is that instant when the bow, bow portion, the forward portion of the ship just about to touch the blocks. Okay, and the, the trim has almost become zero and the ship shifts forward and aft is already touching but the forward end is just about to take the block. That instant is the critical instant and uh, means the ship, ship, after that instant, the ship is completely on the blocks. So what is this force P is uh, uh, doing to the stability? It's causing a loss in the ship's GM. Okay, also it's creating a trimming moment which uh, causes a trim by the head. And from the time the ship takes the blocks at stern, the force P is continuously increasing as the water level is dropping because the ship's buoyancy is reducing. Underwater volume of the ship is reducing. So consequently, the buoyancy force is reducing because the weight of the ship is progressively getting transferred on the keel blocks and this up thrust force P, which is also called reaction force from the key blocks, is increasing continuously. So, so as the up thrust force P continuously increases, the loss of GM is also continuously becoming more and more. So, till the time it comes to the critical instant, when the loss is maximum. But once the uh, she is on the blocks and after that even the GM is uh, becoming lesser and lesser uh, but it's uh, not of much concern because ship is flat on the keel blocks all along its length. So there are now 
two methods of finding this force P. We need to find this force P only then we can find the virtual loss of GM. What is what loss of GM is taking place? So what will be the GM when the ship is on the blocks? So at any instant the GM should be sufficiently positive. So that has to be calculated before arrival and ensure that GM is sufficiently positive. So calculation of force P. Force P is the upthrust or the reaction force of the keel blocks. As the weight of the ship is transferred on the blocks due to falling water level in the dock. Now during critical period, from the time stern takes the block till the time bow takes the block, the upthrust force P we can calculate in this manner that because this force P is a causing a trimming moment is acting right aft on the after perpendicular at the keel level and is causing a trimming moment the stern trim with which we arrived is reducing continuously so trimming moment is given by force multiplied by distance from center of flotation force is the p and a is taken as distance from the center of flotation to the point where the force p is acting on the keel plate right aft on the after perpendicular. So what will be this distance from after perpendicular to the center of flotation that is the LCF of the vessel. So if you have uh, in the stern trim questions uh, on dry dock the A this distance will be nothing but the LCF. So we multiply the force P with LCF and of course trimming moment required trimming moment is always uh, given by also change of trim into MCTC. TC is a change of trim. And uh, this change of trim will be equal to the trim on arrival because the shift will become completely flat on the keel blocks and trim will be zero. So this will be actually equal to the trim, arrival trim and into MCTC. MCTC and LCF both can be extracted from the hydrostatic particulars uh, after finding the hydrostatic draft on arrival. Okay, so uh, after critical period, once the ship is entirely resting along its full length on the blocks and the water level is falling, so P can also be the increase in the P level in the P can also be found uh, by drop in water level into TPC like when you do when you uh, doing the trim questions you have mean rise and mean sinkage which is uh, W upon TPC. So similarly here here will be the rise the ship is rising out of the water. So the P can be found, whatever is a drop in water level, multiply by TPC. And of course, any time during dry docking, P is nothing but the uh, upthrust force. And uh, we assume like it is equivalent, the effectiveness of this force is uh, equivalent to a weight being discharged from the keel level. So where the P force is acting right aft at the keel level on the stern, we assume that a weight is being discharged. What is that weight? Uh, that is a weight which is transferred on the keel blocks. So now the buoyancy is not supporting the full weight of the ship. The weight, of, uh, weight supported by buoyancy will be W minus P. And P is the P is nothing but the weight of the ship supported by keel locks, and it is the re reaction force. So we assume that P tons is the weight discharged from the keel level. So at any time, at any time, if you find the if you know the find the hydrostatic draft of the ship if you know the hydrostatic draft of the ship after the ship is on the blocks 
you it will be reduced underwater volume so that displacement at that the reduced underwater volume if you uh, find from the hydrostatic particulars that will be called virtual displacement so the actual displacement on arrival when ship was floating minus this virtual displacement at any time that will also be force p so two methods are there of finding this virtual loss of gm which is caused by this upthrust force p in the first method we assume the weight a weight is discharged from the key level at after perpendicular so as you know that formula for gg1 when you discharge a weight the ship center of gravity will also shift when you discharge a weight it will move away from the center of gravity or the weight being discharged so weight is being discharged from the key level so what is the distance distance from the keel level to the ship center of gravity vertical distance is nothing but the kg of the vessel and weight discharge is p p tons so p into kg w into d you do weight discharge into distance so w into d here it will be p into kg divided by final displacement final displacement is if you have discharged p tons so final displacement is w minus p that is a formula right so same formula has been used here the ship center of gravity has moved upward because weight is discharged from the key level and since is moving the g is moving upward so gm is reducing that loss of gm is p into kg divided by w minus p p you have already found in the earlier by trimming moment formula here p into a is equal to tc into it. from here you can find the p p will be change of trim into mctc divided by lcf so the second method of finding virtual loss of gm this method assumes that the cent the for the buoyancy force is getting transferred to the keel blocks in the first method uh, we are assuming a weight is being discharged in here we are not considering any change in the ship's weight but we are considering that the buoyancy force which is becoming lesser and lesser with the drop on drop in the water level that buoyancy force is being transferred to the keel blocks so that is causing a reduction in the km of the vessel metal center is coming down so the km is reducing and the formula will be force p multiplied by km up upon w so here we don't take virtual displacement not w minus p here we just take the actual displacement of the vessel which she had on arrival at dry dock in floating condition so p into km upon w km will be for the reduced displacement because we are assuming that the buoyancy force is being transferred to the keel blocks so the km must be for the virtual displacement means w minus p for this displacement we must find p first and then when you finding km you know you, you take the displacement after subtracting the p from the actual displacement this reduced this reduced volume so km should be always for the reduced displacement w minus p unless the question in the says that assume it is constant then you can take the original km and w is the original displacement of the vessel on arrival at dry dock in floating condition the loss of gm when you get once you get the loss of gm and uh, we find the uh, what this uh, uh, with, we find what will be the uh, gm at the at that particular instant uh, when the ship takes the blocks then we subtract this loss of gm and we will uh, we will get the gm at that moment which is called virtual gm because the ship's gm is becoming lesser 
So once you subtract this loss of GM from the GM at that instant, we get the GM virtual. Virtual. So you know writing moment is W into GZ and at small angles of heel GZ is given by GM sine theta. So if you are calculating writing moment, uh, your loss of GM with the first method by this method where P into kg upon W minus P. If you are calculating your loss of GM by this method, the writing moment formula will be W minus P into virtual GM into sin theta. So here remember you are taking W minus P, not W. And GM V will be, not, will be the virtual GM after you subtract the loss of GM. You will get the virtual GM. So, and theta is the angle of heel. In the second method, if you are finding the loss of GM by this, by second method, P into KM upon W. So here, the writing moment will be, you, have, you multiply by the actual displacement, not W minus P, actual displacement of the vessel, W. Of course, GM will be virtual GM as found by the formula and sine theta. Theta is the angle of heel. FSE, once the ship has touched the blocks, anytime when after the ship has touched the blocks, means it's on the blocks, from that moment onward, the FSE we have to find FSM upon W minus P we have to do. You may be given an FSC in the question that will be in the floating condition. So you can use that FSC only when the ship, until the time ship is not on the blocks, is floating. But once the ship is on the blocks, the same FSC cannot be used. FSC has to be reworked out, and you will have to divide FSM by W minus P. And the, it is said that once the ship is completely on the blocks all over and the water level is dropping now, the FSC may be ignored after that. But till the time she is not on the completely on the blocks like that critical period, and time and till the time she just touches just touches a block. It means the critical instant is when she is just about to touch the blocks. Till that moment, you have to find FSC by FSM upon W minus P. So, I, I think this is this is all about this stability during dry docking, and I will this all, all this will become very clear once we do some numericals on dry docking and grounding. Same thing, same concept is in grounding. This force P, force P, upthrust force, and the virtual loss of GM, same formula is applied in grounding also. It is the same concept. Okay, thank you very much for now. And uh, just wait for my next video. I'm just about to put another video which will be only on some numericals. We will do some numericals on the dry docking and grounding to make the theory part clear. Thank you very much. You can leave your comments or questions and I will be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you.